Hold up. Yeah. Underway shortly. We'll soon learn the true performance of these cars out on track. What can we expect to see in the following session? Well, I think we're all expecting the Mercedes power unit to be particularly strong this year, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them at the front. But I wouldn't discount Red Bull or Ferrari just yet. We know they have the talent and the resources to react to any problem, so although they may be playing catch-up, I would expect them to bring some major upgrades pretty early, maybe before we even get back to Europe. Yo, what is going on guys? It is FoxyDude98 here. Welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today here on my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Formula 1 2015 career mode series um, with, uh, the Red, with the Ferrari driver of Sebastian Vettel. Now, the reason I decided to do an F1 video or an F1 series that I want to do is because I'm not really, I don't really have, my channel is a gaming channel. I don't really have any specific games that I play. I play a lot of Black Ops 2, which is why I mostly did that. I wanted to switch it up a little bit, and I felt like doing an F1 career mode because I'm a massive F1 fan, and this game is still only came out about like uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I'd start a career mode here with Sebastian Vettel. Now, this is how the series works. Um, I'll be going through, obviously, all the race circuits, doing them all. I'm going to be doing a practice session for all of them. One shot qualifying, which you can see on your screen right now. The practice session, all the footage was corrupt, so I couldn't get that practice session of you guys. Um, and uh, this is a one shot qualifying, so I only get one chance here to qualify in a decent position. And as you can see, Lewis Hamilton is the ghost that's in front of me. That's the fastest time. I'm trying to beat that ghost effectively to get pole position. And um, yeah, we're going to go through the whole thing. So if you wouldn't mind smashing a like on this video for this brand new series, that'd be absolutely awesome. It's not going to be the main focus on my channel. So if you think I'm just going to upload F1, it's not like that. It's probably going to be every two, every th two, three days that I do this. Unless you guys continue to hit the target of five likes. If you can hit five likes, I will do it more often. But otherwise, I will still produce it. Just not as often as maybe coming, maybe you think of. But we're coming around the final corner here on our qualifying lap. We make a small mistake here. Round to the final corner, but then we get the DRS wide open and pace our way down towards the start finish line. And as you can see, we beat the ghost uh, of Lewis Hamilton in our one shot qualifying session, meaning we've done a really good job here. Grab pole position, you can see my Mr. Man, my main man, Sebastian Vettel, all happy, all uh, seems all good. The Ferrari is on pole position. What a great qualifying performance there by Sebastian Vettel. It's going to put him in a really strong position for the race tomorrow. Well, I think he's going to be difficult to beat from pole. And if he can hold off any challenges in the first few laps, he'll create a gap and be off into the distance. It's nearly five o'clock here local time and welcome to race day here in Melbourne, Australia. The cars are on the grid and they should be setting off shortly for the formation lap. I'm really looking forward to today's race, but with Sebastian Vettel on pole, you do wonder if it's going to be another championship winning season for the German driver. Seb has been in this for so many times before, and I wouldn't be surprised if he can go on from here and win today's race. Whether he has the car to beat the Mercedes over the entire season, though, is a completely different matter. So what would you have been doing overnight if you were Lewis Hamilton, to make up the time difference that he needs to make up based on yesterday's qualifying times? He clearly has a pretty good balance in the car. He just needs to work out where he can squeeze an extra tenth or two to make up the difference. All right then, guys. So as you can see, it is race day here. Now, how we're also going to be doing this is I'm going to be playing. Oops, excuse me. We're going to be doing a 25% uh, of all races, but the lights out and away we go here for the first race of the 2015 season. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get a very good start here. Lewis Hamilton alongside us, but luckily we've tried to go around the outside here. Got a better drive going into turn two, and we take the lead, continuing on, and we have led Lewis Hamilton second, Rosberg third. A little bit of traffic going and a bit of collisions going on behind now, but we break comfortably into turn three in the lead of this race which is exactly what I wanted I didn't want the Mercedes to pass me because if you guys don't know I'm driving for the Ferrari team which theoretically in real life are probably best of the rest in terms of the teams around Mercedes so I wanted to make sure that I stayed ahead of them just in case if they did get in front of me they would probably build a gap and it'd be difficult to pass them back but We've managed to keep the lead now, and we're going to continue to follow us along as we head through through the first lap here. Trying to make sure that we just get everything up to temperature, get the tyres, get the brakes up to temperature. Hopefully then we can't stop sliding around the track, and then we'll be able to start our defence against the Mercedes. Because I will be able to pull away, but the Mercedes are definitely going to be right on my back. You can see here in the second sector, the two tenths is all it is separating us from Hamilton now. As we come down towards the final sector of this racetrack, 
hopefully trying to um, basically just get our first one in the season and try and kickstart a championship winning season. But it's going to be difficult, which is exactly why I chose Ferrari. I could have chosen Mercedes for this season. But I decided to go with Ferrari. I didn't want to be the best team and say, yeah, I'm, I'm the winner and stuff like that. So here we are now coming around the final corner. A bit of a mistake here going onto the grass. I've sh I struggled all race to get that last corner right. But it's brought Hamilton right onto the back of us here. And now we managed to set the fastest lap. But I think Lewis may have set a faster lap than us. No, he didn't. But luckily, he didn't get past us. And we go back into turn one and in through into turn two on lap two at the very start. Of, uh, still in the lead. But it can still go either way here. I go into lean fuel, make sure to try and save a little bit of fuel. And again, Hamilton tries to have a look at me, but he didn't get it. Now we're going to have a look here at Lewis Hamilton's start because his start was better than mine. So you can see his initial getaway was better than mine. And then as we come into turn one, he's actually got the inside line, but he gave me the space round the outside and I managed to um, get back in front. Now, a really cool feature of this um, uh, Formula One uh, game is you can literally go into theater mode and like Black Ops 2 and go and view all the driver's perspectives. So we saw a view of Hamilton start there because it was much quicker than mine. We're back here on board myself now on lap two of this uh, Grand Prix. Um, I am playing on expert difficulty. Now there is an uh, extra difficulty up, which is Legend AI. Now I've raced one race on there and I got destroyed in that race. But if you do want me to change it so it's Legend AI rather than Expert, let me know in the comment section down below and that'd be absolutely awesome because if you want me to do X, uh, sorry, if you want me to do Legend AI, I'll definitely do Legend AI just to make sure that you, I get what you guys want. And if there's anything you want me to do in terms of Formula 1, maybe the rate the race is longer or so what, but uh, let me know. But unfortunately, Hamilton goes for another move, but it doesn't quite stick. Nico Rosberg now up into second place and he's now going to be the main man trying to attack us as we head down towards the final sector of this, uh, this uh, track, making sure that we can uh, continue out in front. But... Australia is a track that I do like driving around. It's not a track that I'll always drive around in terms if I'm just doing like single races by myself. But it's a fun track to drive around nevertheless. But this final corner here causes me a lot of issues. And you'll see that in the Grand Prix. It does cause me quite a few issues. But luckily we still are in front of the Mercedes. And the DRS is going to be active soon. Which means, as you can see, however, everyone behind me all setting their fastest laps of the race. And I'm not matching their pace, so I do need to pick it up a bit. But here we go now. Rosberg getting very close to the back of our car. He goes for a move around the inside of turn three. But luckily, again, this is one key thing. I managed, managed to outbreak Nico Rosberg going into turn three. And that's something I recommend you do. The AIs break very early sometimes when it comes to this game. Especially in the, in the sec between like the second, first, and third gear corners. They'll always break really late, uh, really early. So you want to break really late, and then you'll be able to either keep your position, or you'll be able to get an overtake done, which will, for you, which will, which will benefit you anyway in the race. But we still managed to keep our place here in front of the Mercedes. Now I just want to quickly say this is only going to be the highlights of the whole race. So if you think this is just me doing the whole race, it's not the whole race, okay? Because otherwise you'll probably get bored of me and want to slap me in the face. So this is just the highlights of the Grand Prix and the, basically the best part. So some videos are going to be quite long, maybe 20 minutes plus. Some videos may only be like 15 minutes. It depends on how much stuff goes on in the race. But um, anyway here, also the other assist that I've got that is, oh, assists. You can see I've got the dynamic racing line, which is those that, which is this thing now coming into the final corner. You can see the red and green lines there for corners only, just to get me the right lines into the corners. Um, apart from that, nothing else is going on either way. But now we come down to the main uh, start finish straight. Rosberg really closing in on us this time. Now the DRS is going to be activated. Now if you don't know what DRS is, it's something called its nickname is Rosberg tries to go on the inside here again. Take that outside line and outbreak Rosberg. Now, the DRS is a drag reduction system. There's a flap on the rear wing of the cars, which will open, and that gives you basically little, very little downforce, and it gives you an increased top speed, and it's basically a button which you can use to overtake, try, overtake the other driver that's in front of you. Um, however, you have to be within one second in a DRS detection range to actually activate it. So then when you get to the activation zone, you will hear a beep in the ear of your uh, car as a driver. You don't hear it in the actual game. You'll just get a notification. You'll just come in the bottom uh, right where uh, my uh, gears and ratio and all that stuff is in speed. Um, it'll give you a beep in your ear. You activate the DRS and it gives you the chance to overtake. Now that's actually been enabled. You can only enable it after three laps. We've now gone past three laps. We're on lap four. So this is where it's going to start to get difficult now. I've managed to hold off the Mercedes through this first period of the lap. But I haven't managed to build the crucial one second gap that I need to stop them from getting what's basically the overtake button. I'm going to call it the overtake button just because it's easier. 
Um, oh, I'm just going to call it actually. I'm just going to say DRS, the actual thing. But basically, if you don't, if you're still a bit unsure, it's the overtake button. Put it that way. But anyway, um. Coming out down towards the final corner, our Mercedes are both in the detection zone and will both get DRS down this straight as we turn into the corner now. This is where it's going to get difficult. I need to use every little speed I've got because both Mercedes are going to have this DRS and they're going to try and have a go at me. Now as we come down, you can see Rosberg there with the flap open on his rear wing, but he doesn't quite get close enough. Now that's one thing that's crucial. This DRS system, it's not a permanent overtake. And however, he does get another shot at here. This is a second detection zone, but luckily I'm out of the slipstream because I moved over to the uh, left-hand side just a little bit more. Covered off Rosberg, and on lap 5 here, we are still in P1 and going really, really nicely. But, like I said before, the DRS is not a permanent overtake button. It's not going to get you straight past them. It depends on how close you are to the driver. If you're literally a, one, a full one second back, you're not going to get the overtake done, depending on how fast the car is or how slow the car is that's in front of you. But, luckily for me, I'm in a Ferrari, which is a competitive team, uh, a very competitive car as well. So, hopefully, we can try and continue our... Um, pace onwards but a lot really did a lot happen at the start of this race uh, a lot happened in the whole race to be honest uh, which was uh, a good thing so it's not really just uh, skipping a lot uh, cutting out loads of things so a lot did really happen and it was a really fun race to a uh, really good race to be a part of now um if something happens as well guys uh, in terms of say if i span out or if i did anything like that there is a button that allows me to do flashbacks which can get me back to a point where that doesn't happen that's all banned. This is literally a whole race. Whatever happens, happens. So if I spin, uh, that's that's tough luck. If I uh, if my engine blows up or something like that, that's tough luck. Whatever happens in this race. But now, we're going to be on board with Nico Rosberg this time as he gets DRS down the straight again. He's going to get past me here this time. But, again, he breaks a little early, takes the inside line, and I go back on him. Now, at this point, I actually look back to see if Rosberg was there. I went wide. Back on board with Lewis Hamilton. Rosberg gets the DRS here. It's going to go around the outside of me. I break way too early. Hamilton then gets a chance to go around the outside of me. I make sure that he can't do that. And then, as you can see, back on board with myself. Hamilton and I are battling it out. Hamilton, however, gives me a little bit of space around the inside. I've got the inside line going into turn five, and I've kept the position. However, crucially, Mika Rosberg's now ahead of me, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to stay in front of both Mercedes, but I was actually, while she was on board with Nico Rosberg for the, for the maneuver, I was actually looking backwards, looking at my rear wing to see if Rosberg was there, and I paid no attention to the corner. That cost me dearly, and now I'm behind Rosberg, and now I need to catch him up. But a lot's going to start happening now. As you can see, there's a lot of smoke in front of me. That's coming from Nico Rosberg's engine. Nico Rosberg's engine at this point actually exploded. You can see that I'm in front. But that actually caught me out going into the corner. I go onto the gravel trap. Me and Hamilton collide. And I actually spin. And I'm now losing places. I reverse the car back outwards and try and get myself back onto the racetrack. But after going down behind Nico Rosberg and then going back ahead of Rosberg... We're going to ride on board with Hamilton here. The smoke comes in. It actually affects me. And it's his rear tyre that hits my front tyre. And then that's going to cause me to have the damage. But it's now dropped me all the way down into ninth place. Like I said, if there's a spin or an accident like this happens, that's tough luck. I now need to fight my way back through the field. Rosberg is out of the race, though. If you don't see it up there, it says P9 out of 19. Rosberg retired with an engine failure. I'm now going to go try and go around the inside of Max Verstappen here, trying to make some places back up. But Verstappen does very well in defending his position against me. And as you can see, then I get DRS. A slide here, and I make contact with the barriers. Luckily, no damage was taken from that. Um, and we continue to keep the DRS, though, because we were still in the one-second range. More disaster, though. We've lost more time to Verstappen, and we need to try and gain it all back up. We skip ahead, though, to lap seven at the end of the lap here. Um... I called my pit stop in a lot earlier, so um, I think I was meant to go in a lap later, but I decided to try and get the undercut here, and now as you can see, we're going to be making our way into the pit stop from a beautiful theatre angle, and uh, see if my Ferrari mechanics can get the job done here. The medium compound tyres go on, which are the slower set of tyres, but they are more durable, but however, there's a lot of cars coming through the pit lane, that's held me up, and that's lost me even more time. So despite crashing into the barriers in the final corner, hitting, making contact with Hamilton and spinning, we've now got to deal with this issue. But anyway, we continue ourselves back on track here, and Felipe Massa is the car in front of me. We're down to 14th place, which is horrible. We're not going to be scoring any points. 
To get any points, guys, if you are unaware of the F1 rules, you need to finish in the top 10 to get yourself points. The winner gets 25 points, and it goes all the way downwards. I'll show you the points table at the end of every Grand Prix and the Drivers' Championship, so you can see how the point system works here. But we've managed to get ourselves right up with Felipe Massa, just taking right the inside line. He gave us way too much space here, and I cut him off, and we have taken ourselves past Felipe Massa. Next up is Felipe Nasa. How confusing is that? Massa? Nasa. Uh, anyway, now we have caught up to Felipe Nasser, and we're going to go and try and get a move on him now, right around the inside of the penultimate corner here. A great move from Sebastian Vettel as we try and build on trying to either salvage as many points as we possibly can. We're still 12th, and we're not getting any points at the moment. However, the second set of drivers are coming into the pits now. That's going to give us the opportunity to go back out in front. We're up to 7th place now. And uh, Max Verstappen there was in front of me. Remember, he was in front of me before the pit stops. My tyres are obviously up, up to temperature. Max's are cooling down all the time. He needs to get his tyres up to temperature. And I managed to make the move on for Verstappen. Going up into sixth place here now. And starting to make a fight back up the field after our first our, uh, our contact with Lewis Hamilton. And also contact with the barrier. But we catch up now to Roman Grosjean here on lap 9 of the Grand Prix. With Daniel Ricciardo just in front of him. And again, my special outbreaking manoeuvres that I always do. And I go right round the inside of Grosjean into the penultimate corner once again. He still tries to fight with me. So I give him a little bit of the outside. I give him the inside line into the final corner. To make sure that he could possibly do it. Otherwise, if we had contact again, it would literally just ruin the whole race for me. But we set the fastest lap of the race here. Now, this is the part of the race where I felt so comfortable. I was really, really quick on these tyres. Um, I felt happy. I wasn't happy on the uh, option tyres, which were, I used at the start of the race, which were the uh, yellow marked soft tyres. And now we try and make a move. Ambitious on Daniel Ricciardo. Small contact made. I lifted off the throttle to give Ricciardo the place back because, unfairly, I did hit into Ricciardo. So I gave him the position back here. Followed him round through turn five. Now I'm getting the slipstream run with Ricciardo. Ricciardo's a slower car than mine in the Red Bull. Inside line into turn six. Beautifully done. And that's what we wanted here on lap 10. Next up in front of me is Kimi Raikkonen, who is seven seconds ahead of me. That's a lot to close in five laps, but I was feeling really comfortable on these tyres. I changed it to rich fuel mixture, which basically gives me, which burns through my fuel a lot more, but gives me a lot more pace. But we cut all the way to lap 14. I've been closing, closing, closing throughout this whole race. And as you can see now, Bottas is in front of me. Raikkonen managed to get the job done on Bottas. He managed to get the pass on him. And the Williams is, tends to be a little bit slower than the Ferrari in some specific circuits. Now this was my opportunity to catch up on Bottas and get the move done. So... We're currently on lap 14. I've got lap. I've got the end of this lap, and I've also got next lap. But I get a super, superb drive coming out of turn 12 and turn 13. I think it's turn 12 and turn 13. If it's not, that's embarrassing. And uh, we managed to go around the inside of Valtteri Bottas, make another great overtake into the from the inside of Bottas. I turned to have a little look if he was fully behind me or if I needed to give him some space. Finally, you can see in front of me is Kimi Raikkonen, but my engineer is telling me that my fuel is low. I try and go for a for a risky late brake maneuver. But Raikkonen was too far in front of me. And we're going to have to follow him around. And we've only got this lap now. This is lap 15. This is the only chance I'm going to get now to get past Raikkonen and get this job done. So if I want to get this maneuver finished, I need to do it now. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. But Bottas has another go at me. Luckily, though, again, I outbraked him around the outside. He braked a little early. And now it's my chase to get Kimi Raikkonen. Because at this, best, at this rate... From despite making contact with Hamilton and dropping all the way down to 14th after the pit stops, I could be able to fight myself all the way back up to second, which would be a great result. Unfortunately, I've got no chance of winning this race. Hamilton, as you can see probably on your screens right now from the mini-map in the bottom right, uh, bottom left, he's just way, way too far in front for me. He's not in a range where I can possibly try and attack him. Unless he has an engine problem like his teammate Rosberg did, I'm probably going to have no chance whatsoever of catching him. My best shot is second place, but at the moment, I'm on the podium, which is a good thing. As long as I can get onto the podium, it'd be great. But with Raikkonen being so close in front of me, I really wanted to try and get past him. So, we're coming up now, coming towards the final uh, sector now of this race here. We get another beautiful drive through turns 12 and 13. Again, I love that corner so much. Raikkonen didn't get such a good drive. Again, I'm going to use the slipstream on Kimi Raikkonen. Going around the inside of Kimi Raikkonen, getting the job done. However, Raikkonen stays with me. You might be able to see him. Yeah, I turn back. I give him space around the outside. But going into the penultimate corner, I am now in front of Kimi Raikkonen. And that's going to settle it for what's going to be an eventful Australian Grand Prix. We start on pole. Bit of contact with Hamilton. Lost it on the barriers, but we managed to take second place here. And that's going to wrap it up for the end of the first race. Sebastian Vettel, second place in the race. And uh, yeah.
So there we are, guys. We are on the podium now. Sitting there in second place, Lewis Hamilton with the victory and uh, Kimi Raikkonen grabbing himself second place. I was pretty impressed with the result I did. I thought I wouldn't even be able to make it onto the podium. I thought the seven second gap to Bottas was pretty extreme, but we did it and we passed Raikkonen as well and we flow the champagne around and Hamilton will lead the championship going into the next race, which is in Malaysia. And I'm going to let the commentators now speak their little bit like they tend to do. Lewis is always someone the other drivers respect. He's one of the best drivers on the grid, and if he has a competitive car, he'll always be near the front. And he's proven that yet again today. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us, and goodbye until the next race. Right then, guys, so as you can see here, Lewis Hamilton leads the way with 25 points. I'm on 18. Uh, Rosberg did retire from that race, but if you guys did enjoy this video, that'd be absolutely awesome. Smash the like rating, subscribe for some more daily content, and I'll see you in the future. Take care. Adios.